what to do YouTube this is acid root so I'm gonna review the astronaut status mixtape by future which came out in early 2012 and was kind of like the prelude to futures Pluto album that came out in early 2012 also so future had a pretty big 2011 number of hits projects like dirty sprite and records like that he had some hits like racks on racks and some of those type moments and Tony Montana so he had a number of hits in 2011 he was really bubbling that year and it crested into this year and this was like futures breakout year and this mixtape was like the last taste of like the mixtape future as he started to crest and get used to album making and that type of stuff. And it's pretty interesting just because I like Dirty Sprite when I reviewed that back in January. But I kind of wanted to see what's up. I kind of wanted to see what was up with future as we got the last of his free music and at least his free music for a while. He did drop other mixtapes. I reviewed some of them like Monster and purple rain and some of those but this is kind of one before he broke even to the album cut so i would have to say it is a pretty solid project i definitely i definitely feel like it's worthwhile if it's 250,000 downloads on that piff i mean future was one of the highlights that was doing it around that time and he had a pretty big underground following that was pretty ravenous at the time he was kind of doing in like the early 2010s what jeezy was kind of doing in like the mid 2000s and stuff and he kind of was starting to shift like the tides as like 2010s era trap started to manifest i don't feel like i don't feel like it was wholesomely spearheaded quite as early as January 2012 when this project happened but there were a lot of notations as things started to shift and you'll see some folks on here like Ludacris, Rocco, Young Jeezy and even Gucci Mane who kind of sound they do sound at home on some of these future beats but it really feels like future was kind of the one that had the edge in terms of like just the new tricks as far as like avant-garde type stuff that was kind of going on around the time so it's just interesting to kind of get that because there were some new styles like Migos and Young Thug and Moneybag Yo and Travis Scott and a bunch of those folks that were going to keep showing up as time progressed and that sort of thing it was just definitely kind of interesting this mixtape I want to say had at least one single and that's kind of the prospect about it. I looked online on the charts as far as what had happened with Future. There was at least one song that charted on the Billboard charts as far as like popular songs and that was the song Itchin'. Now this song was produced by Mike Will Made It and it's probably got one of the best beats on this whole project. I mean Lil Wayne, I think where I first heard this song was Lil Wayne did a freestyle to it on one of his mixtapes. I definitely feel like that's pretty solid enough. And um, has like a real kind of belly. It just feels like a perfect little mellow club kind of anthem where it's just kind of a new sound. It's not so much like 2000s trap music. This is kind of one that has like Mike Will made it and folks like that and Metro Boomin and Southside and some of those type people that were to wind up shifting the sound throughout the 2010s. But this one just has like a real kind of wet and kind of dripping kind of beat towards it i really feel like it just kind of reminds me of something i don't know it, it's um it's a real hollow sounding kind of club type beat this has a lot of good emphasis this feels really kind of creeping and kind of like brooding in some ways but i just like the concept because future was really plotting on this song the way he was talking about it. he knew that he was creeping on a come up and some of that type of stuff so it's interesting to kind of get that Pretty much the only single on the project was still pretty rock solid and I feel like this album is chock full of kind of these cuts. It's too bad that Mike Will made it did not put more beats on this project but it's just like with Metro Boom and how he has kind of chemistry with him we didn't quite get the full blown delivery. I don't know if he had been on to mess with Metro Boom and quite yet but it's just interesting. Zaytoven is on here. There are some other ones I'm trying to think of some other folks. Um, Zaytoven's the only other notable producer that I really recall it up at this point. But just to talk about some of these, um, there's 17 songs on this mixtape. There's four skits and interludes. So there's 21 songs, but minus those four skits and interludes, there's 17. So I'm going to go ahead and recommend the 10 or the nine songs out of 17 I recommend, then we'll talk about this. So the nine songs I recommend would be Best to Shine, Birds Take a Bath, Blow with Ludacris and Rocco, Itchin, Itchin is number four, Future Back, Jordan Diddy, My Ho 2, Swap It Out, and Transform. So some of these, like I really feel like some pretty ravenous club beats would be My Ho 2, 
and best to shine. I feel like my ho two really reminds me of like a trap or die type style of young Jeezy, but super sized on steroids. Has like these real glittering kind of haunting kind of piano keys on there that really make it a terrific ride. And Transform really feels like a song that you would hear fucked up and stuff. Transform really feels like a dripping kind of song. This is kind of one that just has like a more syrup sipping and kind of getting drunk kind of feeling in mind. I mean, Future did kind of have some of those drug addled type raps on here, so it's interesting to kind of get some of that. But this is kind of amidst like the the syrup sipping days and some of that type of stuff. I mean, even though that had been going on for a while, just in terms of like the newfangled trap music to kind of do some of that. So these were a lot of those moments. And another one that's kind of like that is Swap It Out. I really kind of like the sluggish kind of belly kind of energy on Swap It Out. It just feels really kind of hazy. It still feels like a club record in some senses, but it just kind of feels almost distorted in a way. It's just kind of one that's similar to Itchin, but just more kind of melted in a feeling, I would have to say. Future Back is probably one of the creepiest songs on here. This is one that almost sounds horrorcore, but this really feels like a dark and real kind of hazy type stuff that he was doing on like Dirty Sprite 2 and some of those projects like Evil and some of those. It's a real haunting kind of song. Uh, Birds Take a Bath is a really nice, with Jeezy and Young Scooter, this one's a really nice uh nightclub song definitely like a vanilla nightclub song this feel this feels like a basic night at the club and that sort of thing it's just kind of a nice night out and that sort of concept i like the concept of that and it's jeezy on some kind of more it's good to see jeezy fit in with some new era trap and that sort of stuff just because he kind of did trap in the 2010s but just not to the degree that he did in the 2000s so it's interesting to kind of get him on future who was kind of the hot ticket back in 2011 2012 and stuff and then young scooter who did good job too who was also an up-and-comer then like i said best to shine was like a really kind of haunting club cut this was a real kind of quick paced one and this one really feels like best to shine is very similar to future back this kind of in a more haunting and kind of club oriented type feel towards it. this is definitely one that you can play in a more excited kind of this is kind of one that you can play in a more excited type avenue to take and that sort of thing it's definitely one that's like itching and like my ho too that just works perfectly for a more quick pace at night blow is a really nice one this is a nice posse cut and a nice i'm surprised that this song is free because this one really works as like a kind of more like it's like itching but just kind of less club oriented than itching or at least more of more of this kind of like an album cut but it still has like a nice feel towards it blow just kind of feels more like a nice album cut and just a kind of more haunting kind of song like future back but just kind of in a more clear it just has a more clear veneer about it just a lot, lot more the imagery is very airtight and that type of stuff i would just have to say that's a nice one and Ludacris and Rocco suit the song well. This is another one here in Ludacris on this song. This is kind of Ludacris somewhat out of his element just because his time as far as being in the mainstream was starting to dry up and stuff. So he kind of wasn't in the spotlight as much. It's interesting to get him on a song with Future when he was kind of phasing out just to kind of hear him on that, some of that type of production. So that's a nice one. And um, then Rocco who... And then Rocco, who was an affiliate with Future for the longest time, is on this song, too. So that's just an overall nice one. So this is just kind of haunting one. Kind of works out that way. And um, I think that about covers it. Oh, yeah, Jordan Diddy's a nice one. This is another one that has a good strip club kind of feel and just an overall quick pace. There's some real good ones on here that have some quick paces and that sort of thing. It's just interesting to kind of get some of those moments. There's some moments that kind of have, like, some pretty avid kind of stepping out kind of feel and just kind of an overall kind of policy of like pretty quick paced club type music and it just has that in combination with some of these darker moments and then of course like the kind of lean sipping and more drunken kind of malaise that it kind of has for us so it's just kind of good to kind of get that context especially in terms of like free music as far as this kind of goes but talk about some of the moments i didn't enjoy like I didn't really like the beat arrangement on Deeper Than the Ocean. I felt like the kind of acoustic guitar on there was just kind of an odd pick. And None Bout, None Bout, Rider, and No Matter What were pretty awkward beats on here. There's just some kind of more awkward ones on here that... Um, I felt like Shopping Spree was the one that I was almost an almost song, but I just couldn't quite get into that kind of, I mean, even though it had a real nice electronic kind of beat on there, real kind of glitzy and beep and bloop type song, I felt like 
I just wasn't quite into that one enough to really make it even an almost song. There's just kind of some awkward ones on here and some underwhelming kind of productions, like some of the ones on like Space Cadets and Never Seen These that just don't quite add up as far as like the quality. I feel like Future should have definitely hit up Mike Will Made It a little bit more and some folks like that. I feel like some of the producers that were heavy hitters later in like 2014, 2015, 2016, DJ Mustard, Mike Will Made It, Metro Boomin, TM, I forget his name, but it was like TM88 or something like that. One of those dudes, I forget his name, but um, there's just not, I, I, like I said, with this project kind of being the early, early days of like 2010s era trap music that would shift the sound later, we just didn't get quite the heralded producers. We didn't, get, we didn't quite get the heralded producers who would spearhead the style and kind of get it fleshed out. I mean, I think that did happen by like 2013, 2014 forward, but this was still kind of early where folks were still kind of just got done with the 2000s trap and that type of stuff. So it's just interesting that Future was kind of spearheading this and kind of getting that in motion. But so, um, yeah, I'm going to give this Project Me Liking uh, nine songs out of 17. I'm going to go ahead and give this album a 6.75 out of 10. I feel like that's pretty rock solid. There's definitely some heralded moments on here. And considering that the Considering that this whole project is free and there's some boilers that sound pretty much album quality, some of these have charted and there's just some overall good strip club and kind of weekend club cuts that kind of work on here that kind of make for an exacting kind of purpose as far as stepping out. It's just a good ticket despite the fact that it's from, you know, 11 years ago, but it's still that shouldn't matter. I mean, that's the concept. Just look into refucking with this project and find some menacing kind of dark cuts on here that are perfect for still having beers and swisher sweets and that type of stuff and twerking women and that sort of thing so that just kind of happens to be a thing so 6.75 out of 10 the social score i'm going to give an 8 out of 10 because there are a number of cuts on here that are great for stepping out and even some of the songs i didn't like do kind of have the policy of just an overall festive time that's just even some of the cuts i didn't like are kind of great for like a festive time and are pretty purposeful for stepping out in that sort of sense so with this project being free there's really no excuse to not nab it and kind of dissect it and figure out some of the ones that are worthwhile because a lot of these can be perfect for like a mixtape playlist and other playlists like a burnt cd or something like that just for cruising out i still would recommend some of these songs to be played in a club today i really think that it ha kind of has the policy for that but yeah so in terms of the future like future is working with metro boomin and there's some other projects that are going to come out future just dropped a project in the spring of 2022 called I Never Really Liked You or something like that. So I wonder what's going to happen. I mean, there's still plenty of life left in this year, so we'll probably get some more future and we'll see what's up with that. But this is definitely a rock solid project and worth checking out just because of the exorbitance of how social and vibing this kind of is.